pounds to kind of do it. I think we can do it better. <laughs> Bethlehem! Make him know! Amen. That is our theme throughout 2012. Yeah. That we want to make him right. Mm -hmm. This next Sunday is the fourth Sunday, and fourth Sunday is Share the Love Sunday. We want to remind you that you need to be praying for your ten most wanted. Those ten people within your family, within your life that you want to see come to know God. We want you to pray for them. We want you to put them in the box and pray for them. And many are here today because somebody prayed for them. Right. Amen. Amen. Many of your ten most wanted may be here. And that means that you need to fill in the blanks and keep your ten active and current. Because that's the reason why we are here as a church is to make him known. Amen. I said yesterday that the world came to church. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yep. The world came to church. And it's our job to bring the world to the church. Because God has some redeeming that He wants to do. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. I always challenge you also in that 10 most wanted, put at least one person on there that you don't think there would be no how, no chance for them to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. And I want you to pray for that person. And we'll see the power of God as we continue with that this year to make him known. Amen? Amen. Amen. So next Sunday, we want you to be praying throughout the week and invite someone on your ten most wanted. Or maybe the Holy Spirit will lead you to not invite but to share Christ. Amen. Somebody said uh, that the world came to church yesterday, but did the world come to Jesus? Come on. Yeah. That's the question. And it's our job as individuals to, to bring the world to Jesus. Oh. It's good to, to birth the babies and then bring them into the house. Amen? Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen and praise the Lord because God has given us a goal this year from Acts chapter 5 verse 20 which says, Go stand and speak. Go stand and speak this month about the love of God. For mm -hmm. well, this month we are studying making him known through love. Mm -hmm. Making him known through love. All right. And as the picture says on the screen, uh, you've seen it, God loves you this much and his arms are stretched across the cross. Right. God's love is unconditional, unlimited, and complete. Mm-hmm. Tyler Perry yesterday preached my sermon about what could separate you from the love of God. All right, yesterday. yeah, right. You sound like a preacher to me. <laughs> <laughs> <He's so deep. laughs> Some of the greatest preachers uh, don't have the title of a preacher. Hello, somebody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but God used them to speak. Mm -hmm. um, Today we're going to share a message entitled Husbands and Wives' Role in Marriage. All right. Husbands and Wives' Role in Marriage. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33. Ephesians chapter 5, 21 through 33. Would you stand in reverence to the Word of God? Stand symbolically saying that I will stand on the Word of God. Say to your neighbor, 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 or neighbor, or neighbor. I'm going to stand on this word. I'm going to stand on this word. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. I believe it is four slides. Four slides. Let's read this out loud together at the same time on three. One, two, three. So then, one another, out of reference to Christ, Christ. Why wow. submit wow. yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. 
Husbands love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each and one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Amen. 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 In the household of yes, the Lord, you, you may be seated in the household of the Lord. And again, we're talking about this morning, husband and wives role in marriage, husbands and wives role in marriage. We're going to talk on around three points, uh, four points this morning. We're going to talk on around, we're going to talk about mutual leadership, we're going to talk about mutual lying or yielding, and we're going to talk about mutual love and mutual blessing. Mm -hmm. Mutual leadership, mutual lying or yielding, mutual love, mutual blessings, and we want Christians to know that Christians should have mutually loving and respectful marriages to make him known. Christians should have mutual loving, respectful marriages to make him known. Before I start the lesson this morning or the message, I want to challenge everyone who was not here Wednesday night to go to our website and download the message entitled The Institute of Marriage. The Institute of Marriage. If you don't know how to do that, uh, let maybe one of your grandbabies do that. But you need to really. All right, all right. I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. They just seem to be more technologically advanced. Oh, no uh, my, my daughter taught me I had my phone for. Uh, six months and in two minutes my daughter taught me how to text so <laughs> mm -hmm. so they just seem to be more technically advanced mm -hmm. but uh, you need to listen to that the Institute of Marriage because uh, it tells you the history of marriage in the book of Genesis and uh, Genesis chapter 2 and it shares the the history of marriage and as I shared on Wednesday night uh, we live in a different time, we live in a different culture where marriage is, is really not that automatic. Uh, there was a time in our culture, maybe right. 50 or 60 years, that uh, a lot of people, you know, just would, 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 would grow up and they would get married and have a family. And I told you some of the statistics that say that uh, Many of our households, 70% don't have a man in it or a man on record mm -hmm. that's there. 50% right. may have children in it, so like I said, there's a man somewhere. There's got to be a man somewhere. Um, but I shared the, 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 the genesis of marriage. It is a God-given institute. Right. 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 A God-given institute. And I shared, and I shared, I think, last Sunday, why some people don't marry. Some people don't marry because they're in a relationship with a playboy. <laughs> and playboys like to what? Play. Come on. And they're going to run after every number amount of women they can, and they may just have you on the side as, as his side piece. Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. His, his, his fake wifey. Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. And you're there, and you're raising his kids, and, and it looks like your family. Most people think you're married anyway because you've been together for so long. Mm -hmm. But he has never made that 
Commitment. Come on, right. Come he on. Could be a playboy. He could be a playboy. Ask your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. What neighbor? Boy, neighbor. Are you a playboy? Are you a playboy? <laughs> could be a playboy. Could be a playboy. There are other dynamics that 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 are working as well. Many times, women uh, in our culture at times don't like to get married because the government is taking care of them. Come on, Doc. They get a government check and they 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 get government money for food. They get government money for rent. They don't, they don't have to pay an uh, exorbitant amount of rent. They're living right across the street from where you are. And they're paying $25 a month on rent, and, and you're paying $1,500. Oh, and, and it's hard for somebody that's got it that good to, to fall in love with a man and give all of that up. I shared the dynamics of, of some older couples and, and the trials that they face. They, uh, a lot of older couples don't want to get married because they don't want their money to get messed up with Social Security issues. And there's so many different dynamics to why people don't get married. I think the number one dynamic uh, for this generation is, is many of them have never seen a marriage. Come on, God. Come on, amen. Uh, many of them don't ever remember a man ever being in the house, so they think it's normal. They don't, they, they've never, it's hard for people who, who've never had a model mm. to go out and just manifest that. Mm -hmm. And marriage is the model that God has, has given. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said to make him known uh, Oh, marriages make him known, as we're going to see from the relationship aspect of what a marriage should be. But, but many children don't grow up and think to get married because they've never seen. Come on, Donald. Help us. Help us. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. All right. And, and then they get saved and they become a part of the household of faith. And, and some of you that's been around for so long and you come from... Uh, a different time and a different dichotomy, you wonder now why or oh why are mm -hmm. oh, these young folk not getting mad? Come on. Mm -hmm. And we think it's something wrong with them. Really, but when it's something wrong with where they have come from. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. My Lord. And that's why family is so important because a child will reproduce reproduce the exact same family that they came from most of the time. Mm -hmm. If they had a good, caring father there, especially for a young lady, and he becomes the model of the man that she will grow up and she will marry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Come on. One of the ways you know that you've been a good man, as a, and it's not always, there are always some exceptions to the rules, but one of the ways you know that you've been a good man is that your daughters go out and marry good men. Amen. My Lord. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. <laughs> they reproduce the exact same thing that they come from, and 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 and, and it, it is either a generational blessing mm. or a generational curse. Mm. Come on, God. Lord, help. help us. Hello, <laughs> And that's what we are as a church. Many times we're up against generational curses where children never knew their mother or, or children never knew their daddies. And, and, but yes, they grew up and, and they grew up in all kinds of dysfunction. Mm. Hello, somebody. When they go out to look for love, they, they end up doing like uh, what many said Whitney Houston did. She grew up in the church, a, a church girl. Mm. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Mm. But she married. No law. No law. I'm going to leave Bobby alone. No law. <laughs> but we'll say, for lack of a better word, she married a bad boy. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. People reproduce what they what they grow up in. People wonder now why is it that Rihanna is going out with Chris Brown after he did all that he did to her? Well, you look at both of them background, and they both come from a dysfunctional background. Come on. So we were called in the church a generational curse, and they're just reproducing what they saw when they grew up. And it's very dangerous women for a boy to see his mama get beat on as a young child. 
He will want to step in, but as a as an older man, he will do the almost the exact same thing that his daddy did. Come on, help Hello, us. somebody. Help us. Talking about a generational curse and and, and women and women women it's dangerous to be in a relationship where you accept anything from a man because your daughter will grow up and, and accept the exact same thing that you accept come on, right. come on. hello somebody Amen. Man, man. and you think that they're crazy when really they got it from you <laughs> because you accepted anything don't you know that you are a child of the king you, you just right. can't let man. nobody man. just treat you like you are a what Evelyn said a non-factor mm. no, non hello somebody <laughs> Ooh. when a man won't commit to you that's what and how he's treating you like you're a non-factor mm. hello somebody right. that you don't exist mm. it is very dangerous to accept that kind of love oh because nobody will respect you that's why all them other girls trying to push up on your man because your man haven't committed to you. Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm. A man, a true man knows how to commit. A true man knows how to look out for his woman, too. Mm. All right. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Yeah. You, you accept this kind of love and non-commitment uh, and you give your life away and you come to the end of your life uh, so you'll be like Bobby Brown at Whitney Houston's funeral. Oh! Mm -hmm. Won't even have space for you. Mm -hmm. Come on, and you've been you. with that person the last 20, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, somebody. Hello. Bobby said he had his kids with him, and Whitney probably spent more time in the last 20 years with him and his kids than anybody. Mm -hmm. But yet they didn't have a place for him because he was the ex. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you was never anything. Mm -hmm. You're not even an ex. And people won't even, they won't even have your name on the funeral. Mm -hmm. Service. So what? Hello, somebody, because you've accepted everything but what God said you could, you should have. And I'm talking to, to, to the women and, and, and my spiritual daughters to let you know that you deserve better than what you are. Amen. 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 God says that he created you in his image. He, he created you. You are more than a man. You are a whoa man. Amen. 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 Hello, somebody. Mm. Hello, somebody. And if he can't recognize your value, then guess what? Come on, Mark. You me. need to kick him to the curb. Sure, 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 sure. Sure. Right. You hurt me. You hurt me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, 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 now. now. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you what God said. All right. He created marriage to protect women. Right. Man, man. And that's why we have so many women who are having a pregnancy out, outside of, of wedlock. It's, it's because of daddies are not there to protect them. Daddies are not there to look that boy square in the face. Daddies are not there to show them they gun. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Daddies are not there to let, to let them know, now hey, this is not just in that hoochie mama. Mm. Matter of fact, she's not a hoochie mama at all. Mm -hmm. And you ain't gonna treat her like she's common. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. We as a church, oh, we got to watch out for our girls. And we've got to look at some of these boys' eyes in the church and in the neighborhood and let them know this is not just any kind of girl. This is not just any kind of woman. This is a woman of God. Amen. 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 Either you're going to be seriously committed or you step up. Come on, Doc. Mm. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello. That's what marriage was meant to do. Mm. To be that protection, that guard among society. Marriage was meant to be that evangelism tool as we share with my brothers keepers all the time. If a man gives his life to Jesus Christ, there's a 93% chance that the whole house Amen. will come Amen. to know Jesus. Amen. So, so that's why we're concerned about marriage. Mm. Uh, uh, we're, we're trying to have a revival in this place. All right. Come on. Hello, man. Yes, and revival begins with men. Mm -hmm. That's why I have to give this hard word to some of you. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You need to step up and be the man that God called you. Come on, man. Right. Man. Hello, somebody. Man. Mm -hmm. Some of you are known as men of God. 
Mm. Hello, somebody. But, but there's only one thing that people can hold against you, mm. and it's affecting your evangelism. My yeah. Lord. Yeah. Hello, somebody. We're talking about, and then that was the Institute of Marriage, and, and, and we talked about that uh, on Wednesday night, and, and, and we want you to know that God created this marriage thing. God wants you to be married. Amen. If you don't have Amen. the gift of singleness, God wants you to be married. What is the gift of singleness? Uh, the gift of singleness means that you don't have any sexual urges. Come on, God. Oh. Come on. Hello, somebody. Mm. If you have urges, guess what? <laughs> You're not meant to be single. <laughs> All right. I don't know why you've been single this long anyway. Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm. But God once again says that you just can't go out and marry just anybody. You've got to marry somebody that loves the Lord. Because the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Right. Right. Hello, Amen. somebody. So that don't mean you could just go out and marry that girl at the strip club and you talk about, I'm in love with a stripper. No. <laughs> don't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> it don't work that way. No, no, no. You've got to marry a woman of God. You've got to marry a man of God. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Hello. And, and this morning, I'm going to share the roles that both of you have. Because if you didn't have an example, if you don't have a model, or didn't have the right model, sometimes that's even worse to have the wrong model. Mm -hmm. Because you'll go out and, and, repro and reproduce that toxic kind of marriage. Mm -hmm. You'll think marriage is supposed to be full of drama. You're supposed to argue, fuss, and fight, and cuss all the time. No! Come on, Doc. Mm -hmm. Help us. You had the wrong model. Show you right. Mm -hmm. Show you right. this is the word this morning. It's going to show you the right model. If you didn't have the wrong model, or the right model, or you had the wrong model. Mm -hmm. If you never saw marriage at work or active, or if you saw the wrong way it works. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. This is the right model. It is the Word of God. Oh, and the Word of God talks about, first, about marriage uh, in a husband and wife's role. First of all, it talks about mutual leadership. Mutual. Before he goes on to give the man his role and the wife role, he said, submit yes. to one another out of the reverence of Christ. Yeah. And many times preachers don't even preach this part of the text. Mm. All right. Especially those chauvinistic kind of brothers. Mm. They like to go straight to the woman's role and say that the woman is supposed to submit. You're supposed to submit to me. I'm the head huncher. I'm the I'm the king. I'm, I, I you know I come home and you're to bow down to me, woman. It's <laughs> not Phil says. So how's that working for you? <laughs> 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 But the Bible says uh, in regards to relationship that there is a mutual leadership. Submit also to one another out of the reverence of Christ. Amen. Amen. Submit to one another before he gives uh, her her role and him his role. He says that this is a mutual thing. This is oh, all oh, uh, uh, and that's what a love marriage relationship is. It's a mutual thing. God does not doesn't want you to be his uh, Stepping mat. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. But there's some, some women that uh, run their households. Come on, Doc. Mm -hmm. Say that. Hello, somebody. There's some women out there that get violent. <laughs> Not many. There is some. But God says in His Word that the marriage is a, a mutual thing, a mutual uh, submitting, a mutual subjecting, a mutual oh that 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 that, that we talk things over before things are are, are done. Hello, somebody. Amen. Mutually. Amen. Hello, somebody. I just don't show up uh, with a brand new car without my wife knowing about it. Hello, somebody. Come on, God. I just don't oh, spend thousands of dollars without my wife knowing about it. I, I just don't be doing all of this stuff and silly thing that people do in a relationship. Don't you know you're in a relationship? Come you're on. not just in a ship. That's what, what you was when you were single. You Come were on, God. Ship. Come on. But when you got married, you enter into a relationship, which means you got somebody else uh, to relate to. Amen. Right. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yes, Hello, somebody. And many marriages uh, are, are not working well because you got uh, an authoritative uh, man saying, "Woman, you got to do what I tell you to do." 
at the worst times will quote submission out of context. All right, amen. Hello, somebody. They'll never make it up to verse 21. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. You're supposed to submit to me. Yeah. Hello, somebody. If you got to say it, there may be something wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's a mutual thing, a mutual leadership. Oh, and it says submit to one another out of what? The reverence, reverence for Christ. For Christ. For Christ. For Christ. And that's what we need to realize. That I cannot mistreat anybody because I reverence Christ too much. Because we're all made in the image of God. Amen. Right. Amen. And those of us who have been saved have the Holy Spirit on the inside of them, which means I just can't treat you just any kind of way. I can't treat you like a non-factor when you go to this church. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. And if you come to me, I have to listen because of the God in you. All right. Hello, somebody. And that's uh, and that, and that's a mutual thing, and and if, and if we're gonna be everything that God called us to be, we got to apply this kind of submission within uh, even our leadership ranks. Right. Hello, somebody. This goes for a pastor and his deacons. Uh, we need to submit ourselves to one another. Mm -hmm. right. And right. that's my leadership style. If if we're not on one accord, I don't want to do it. Come All on. Right. Amen. Hello. Hello, somebody. Because I know how the devil can get busy if we're not on one accord. And it's the same thing in marriage. Mm -hmm. If you're not on one accord, don't do it. All right. Amen. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Ooh, let me say, I could save you some heartache, some troubles. If, if, if your wife is not on one But you say, preacher, you don't know my wife. Mm -hmm. I don't have to know your wife. I know your God. Oh, oh, amen. 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 He said, out of reverence to Christ. Out of reverence to Christ. Mm. Hello, somebody. Nobody can hold you back or hold you down or keep you from your blessings uh, if you reverence Christ. Right. As a matter of fact, the word of God says uh, of your enemies that he can make your enemies your footstools, which means uh, he can make your enemies serve you. Amen. 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 My Lord. Make your enemies get, uh, make your enemies uh, let, uh, bring you to your easy chair. Hello, somebody. Come on now. Hello, somebody. Mm. So nobody can stop you if it's God's program. So why are you fussing and fighting? If you're not on one accord, don't do it. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. Now, that takes a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of faith. It takes a lot of faith for a preacher to want to be on one accord with, a de with deacons. Mm. Come on. Because what if they don't want to do it? Mm. If they don't want to do it, it must not be God's will. That's the way I see it. Come on. Hello, somebody. Mm. I've made a lot of mistakes in the past, but I try to keep us on one accord. Mm. Amen. Because right. I Amen. believe that God is powerful enough to, to, to work with us on one accord. Mm. Right. And I know that if we're not on one accord, the devil gets busy. All right. Hello, somebody. And that's why some of you, you you're having relationship problems now because the devil is busy because you don't, oh, you're not on one accord. You do whatever you want to do. Come on, Don. Well, Say it. Hello, somebody. That's why the old bill collectors are calling. She tried to stop you and tell you that you couldn't afford it, but you went out and did what you wanted to do because you was the man. Come on, mm. come on. Hello, somebody. Now, your whole family is going through financial turmoil, which is yeah. the number one reason why oh, people get divorced. Right. And you serving it up and giving it over to the devil. Come on, God. Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm. You need to be on one accord in marriage. Submit yourselves to one another out of the reverence of Christ. Hello, somebody Hi. that can help somebody married for 40 years or married or thinking about marriage. You remember, if you're thinking about marriage and you do get married, remember this is partnership. This is teamwork. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Right. Jordan didn't win his, his first championship by taking all the shots. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. He had to get somebody else involved. Mm -hmm. right. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. In the game. Mm. And that's what uh, uh, Prince James, uh, 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 King James tried to do when he went down to Miami. He realized he couldn't do it all on his own in Cleveland. So he tried to get some folk around here who could, uh, he could pass it to. Hello, somebody. Mm. And they all have to play their own role. Come on. Mm. 
But God wants us to be on one accord in our marriage relationships, mutual leadership. For Philippians 2, 3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Amen. Hello, somebody. Do you consider your wife better than you? Come on. Hello, somebody. Somebody say, oh, yeah. Let me ask a question for the wise, though. Do you consider him better than you? <laughs> and, and I didn't hear no oh, yes, that did I? <laughs> I should have heard some oh, yes. Oh, because that's what the Bible says. Oh, we, oh, we can't be in a marriage. A marriage is not for selfish people. You just cannot be selfish and be married. Amen. If you are, you're going to have a turbulent marriage. My Lord. You, you just can't be vain and be married. Oh, and that, that's what the Word of God, and we say it, and you can read in, in your handout, or your, your practice here talks about what true love is. First Corinthians uh, oh, 13, 4, love is what patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, is not rude, is not what? Self-seeking. And you got a lot of self-seeking folk in marriage. You won't consider your wife. You just do what you want to do. That's not of the Lord. That's self-seeking. That's vain. Oh, girl had a song saying, You're so vain. You're so vain. You probably think this song is about you. He <laughs> said, Preacher, take what you get. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Do uh, nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humanity consider others better than yourself. Apply it to your marriage as a mutual leadership. Right. Hello, go. somebody. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but it's a, it's a mutual lying or yielding. Mm -hmm. And we get into the wise road. The wise road it says, Why submit? Yourself to your oh, own uh, husbands mm -hmm. as you do to the Lord. Again, the right. Lord is in this thing. The Lord is in the mutual leadership. Now, the Lord is in this concept of submission to subject yourself to that man. And that's why I tell single women, you just can't go out and marry just anybody because you're going to have to follow him. Come on, get married. Come on. And if he's making childish and stupid decisions when you're dating and single, guess what? When you marry him, it's not going to change. As a matter of fact, it'll get worse. Hello, somebody. So your main goal as a single woman is you better know that this man is a man of God. You better know that God moves his heart because if you don't, Come on. You can, you can you get into a lot of drama. Right, amen. Hello, somebody. And Mary J. Byer says song, song about no more pain, no more drama in her life. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. But this is a biblical principle to be subject in the same word, way that we're supposed to be subject on the, oh, on the freeway to 55 or 70 miles an hour in the same way you're going to have to be with your husband. You're going to have to be subject to him. Hello, man, somebody. Man. Hello, somebody. You're going to have to be subject to him. Uh, which you're going to have to be yielding to him. Because if you marry, and these are roles, by the way, roles, and you've got to stay in your lane, as some folks say. Know your role. Because if you don't, both of you will be unyielding. And a marriage, oh, that's full of arguments, fussing, cussing, and fighting, has two unyielding people in it. All right. Man, hello, son. I had a concern when Sister Eton and I got married. My concern for us was that we're both used to being in charge. <laughs> she was over a whole region of West Texas. She's been in the army. She's used to telling men what to do. Hello, somebody. <laughs> so she was a colonel. She led me. Hello, somebody. And when we got married, I told him now, the only thing, only thing I have an issue with is, 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 is we both used to wearing the pants. Hello, somebody. 
but, but, but you know what God said? God told me that you're the only one with this. You don't have to be worried or concerned about that. Oh! Hello, son. <laughs> Sister Ezon has led conferences on this word submit. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. And talk on this word called submission. And I don't have a problem with this e time. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Most women would have left Abilene to come to Paul's Valley. Hello. Hello, somebody. Some folk want, want to talk about you. Your wife won't even come to the Sunday service. Hello, come on, somebody. come on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> My wife, my wife, she followed me. She, uh, and as God was leading me, she followed me. She gave up her big time job, making some good money. Hello, somebody. And following, I believe God is blessing her because of that. Mm -hmm. Hello, my, somebody. My. All right, amen. Somebody ought to give God a hand clap of praise up here. Up here. All right. Don't you know? Can you submit to your husband out of the reverence of God?